guys and gals, Nary here from Drinkwing Gamers. So you man, Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Temptations Ballad. So before we jump into that, I'm gonna let you guys know that I'm out of affiliate of Green Man Gaming. What that means is that there's gonna be a link in the description of each video. Y'all click that link, you get taken to their website, you get deals on all the latest and greatest games, and I get commission based on whatever y'all buy. Also, my lovely girlfriend Elle is an artist and she's taking commissions now. I've got links to her Twitter. Uh, I've got links to her Twitter and FA in the description. So if you want y'all want to get some art commissioned. Throw some money at her. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up. And let's... Go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> that was the one we left off on. Let's do Monk. Okay. As masters of martial arts and unarmed combat, the Monk draws upon an internal power called Ki. They perform incredible feats. They have no need for weapons, for their own physical body is all they need in combat. In some cases, they can even hinder the Ki of their opponents to cripple their ability to fight back. I want to say it's Chi, but that's not remember how I... It's chi is C-H-I. What is... Is it Kai? Ki? Kai? And remember the monk from uh, Diablo 3. Pretty crazy damage dealer. The monk is easily the fastest and most nimble of all classes, able to easily outpace their opponents without losing breath. There, there tells a legend of the one particular... One peculiar monk who managed to breach Mount Zenithar's magical defenses and reach its summit. There, this monk learned all the truths of the material, infernal, and celestial planes. This legend is yet to be verified beneath scholarly source. Paladin. Ah, there she is. We can probably just slap a picture of Artemy onto this section and call it a day. Ugh. Paladins stink with such a disgusting celestial scent. I do not understand how you can be around her all day. I'm more nervous about pissing her off, honestly. Cole sighed and flipped through the pages. Righteousness and injustice are at the core of a paladin's virtues. As guardians against the evils of the world, they draw arcane power from their oaths and devotion to undo their opponents. While paladins are trained in the basics of armed combat, their true potential lies in their magical prowess. They hold the ability to heal the wounded, smite the cruel, and defend the innocent from those who wish to harm them. Cole glanced up at Malice suspiciously. Wait, shouldn't Artemy have sensed your demony powers by now? How did you stay hidden all this time? Ha! Foolish! We greater demons are very skilled in cloaking our presence. No mere paladin will be able to sense us unless we unleash a significant portion of our power. Huh. Good to know. Ranger. Cole scowled as he reached the ranger section of the book. Amish is a multi has is multi-classed as a ranger. Great. Do rangers not intrigue you? They seem like a rather powerful class. Not really. Yippee, I'm shooting arrows at people from the sidelines while Papa does all the hard work. How exciting! Cole rolled his eyes before skimming through the page. Masters of the wilderness and the hunt, rangers are predators that stalk their prey with uncanny precision. They're superb trackers with an emphasis in speed and stealth. Few are able to escape their grasp once caught. Rangers are known to arm themselves with a classic bow and arrow, as well as daggers and a wide array of traps. Aware in Axia, certain rangers are able to utilize subtle magic to aid in their hunts. Hmm. I remember the mercenary boys mentioned that Amish's specialty is in trap wire. I've never actually seen the guy fight, though. Rangers are stealth fighters, isn't that the point? Sounds like a great excuse to be lazy, if you ask me. I wonder why he doesn't like Hamish. Uh, Hamish has been nothing but fostering and supportive of him. Why are you being a dick to your father? <laughs> Cole begrudgingly continued reading. Rogue. Cole grimaced. Great, now I've got to read about one of Hamish's multi-class categories. I figured you'd appreciate rogues since they are sneaky little shits just like you. Hey, I'm nothing like Hamish, got it? Cole let an indignant huff before returning to the book. Easily the most cunning and elusive of all classes, the rogue specializes in stealth and deception. They are known to be efficient killers who slink in the shadows, awaiting the perfect moment to strike. Rogues often destroy their enemies in a single, hard-hitting blow before disappearing as quickly as they arrive. Yeah, right. Why can't Hamish use these, use these rogue skills to hide better when he and Papa bang? Everyone in the guild knows what they're, when they're doing it. Cole snapped the book closed with a huff. Loudest goddamn rogue in the city. Well, from what I've heard, your father is quite the specimen. Wouldn't you be more offended if his partner wasn't loud? You're always prattling on about Marrow's prowess, after all. Cole groaned and buried his face in his hands. I really don't want to think about it. Let's see, alright, I've done all those. Physical combat spellcasters. Did he already do that? No, Warlock, Wizard, or Tiffus, Okay, so back. Alright. Oh no, I don't want to go to the supply closet. Great battle strategy. Tavern lobby. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I 
Artemy was in the middle of an intense conversation with several Bonebreaker mercenaries. What do you mean biting is hot? Such attacks are forbidden in chivalric battles. When Mara pulled her aside. Hey, lass. Think you can spare a moment. There's something I wanted to chat with you about in private. Artemy blinked, somewhat surprised. Yeah, I like making him sound kind of like a pirate. Of course, I would be happy to speak with you. There was a strange look on Marrow as he led her to a more secluded corner of the lobby. All the other mercenaries took the hint and left them alone. For someone who usually carried himself with such easygoing confidence, it was odd to see Marrow appear so self-conscious. The elder hyena cleared his throat awkwardly. So, um, you're a good lass and got an honest look about you. You mind sharing your thoughts with this out-of-touch old man? I was just wondering, what do you think about Cole? And does he talk about his old pa much? What's your opinion on him in this entire situation overall? Artemy smiled, amused. Are you asking me for constructive criticism, Sir Marrow? Marrow crossed his arms in an indignant pout. Well, uh, yeah, in a manner of speaking. All the boys in the guild in Hamish love me too much to really speak out against me. And your other teammate Sid is kind of too much of a pushover to be constructive. He chuckled self-consciously. I am, um, as a leader of a father, it's probably healthy to have my ego checked occasionally. At least that's my old, what my old, at least that's what my old sister always used to tell me. Gotta make sure there ain't stuff I'm missing about the folks under my care. So, let me know if there's anything I can do to better- I can do to better- I can do better for my boy. I'm always open to some change. Artemy grew a little quiet. This was certainly not what she was expecting. Her thoughts drifted to memories of Her Excellency's cold stares and indifferent dismissals. And yet, here this hulking brute of a man was asking for her opinion. Artemy sighed and conceded that she truly knows nothing about how families function. Hmm. Well, Cole does speak of you quite often. It is clear that he loves and respects you very much. Despite our short time together, I can already tell you that he that you provide him with much inspiration and support. Mara puffed out his chest with pride. Ha! Now that's what I want to hear. I do have some concerns, however. You are a great man, Mara Bonebreaker, but you cast a large shadow. How is Cole to live up to such a legend? Mara faltered slightly. What do you mean, lass? Artemy restlessly nod on her thumb as she struggled to put her thoughts in order. I've seen Cole do some unsavory things and compromise himself in order to appear more in line with your image. He's no fool. You two are very different people, and yet he does it anyway. I believe Cole has the potential to become a great leader, but not when he's bending all his efforts towards his father's approval. Marrow snorted and crossed his arms defensively. Now, now, Cole ain't gotta do, any, gotta do anything like that to get my approval. I've always tried my best to be supportive of my boy and everything he does, even when I don't really approve. Artemy smiled kindly. That much is clear. Cole knows it, too. All those warm, supportive words? They are comforting, but there's no way to know if they are genuine or if they are simply trying to be a good father. If you are simply trying to be a good father. Cole does ridiculous things to win over your true approval, and he has no idea if he's doing it right or not. Artemy softened and laughed. Two family members bending over backwards in an effort to avoid hurting the other's feelings. It is rather sweet. But in the end, I believe it will be best if you two start being honest with each other. Mara fell quiet. His eye, his glass eye glistened in its empty socket as he scratched his chin. That gives me a bit to think about. Thank you, lass. Let's pause it right here. Alright. I'm gonna save that for my own little playthrough. Not doing the supply closet right now. Alright, where are we going? So... Go home and get some mercy. We've done the church. We've done. We have we done the market district? I forget. Have we done the market district? Probably not. Back. Yes, we've done the market district. Okay, so let's go home and get some rest. Night has descended. Uh, night had descended upon Axia by the time Cole finally returned to the Bonebreaker Guild Building Tavern. It's a mouthful. Sid and Artemy had said their goodbyes and departed to their respective homes after a long day of scurrying about the city. It had been an eventful day, but now was the time to rest up for the Firefly Festivals tomorrow. Cole yawned lazily as he pushed through the heavy doors of his home, only to be met with a mostly empty tavern. Huh? Where did everyone go? The boys are usually a hoot at this time of night. They're out on the they're out on the job tonight. A few of the villagers hired us for bodyguarding duty as they set up for the festival tomorrow. There have been a few cases of folks fainting out of the blue, so paranoia and safety have been upped lately. There was a thump from behind the bar as Marrow poked his head up with a grin. Shockingly, the large hyena was wiping down tables and cleaning up messes instead of causing them. Whoa, you're actually doing chores around here? 
And did Hamish threaten to kick you out of bed and make you sleep on the couch again? Ha! Hey now, I'm just being helpful out of love for my beautiful Hamie. No threats needed. Though he's been glaring at me a lot more today, I think he's still pissed about the broken door frame. Eric cleared his throat loudly and stuffed the cleaning towel behind the bar. Anyways, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about, son. Care to sit down and have a chat with your old man? Cole blinked. Oh, uh, sure. Is everything okay? You look kind of nervous, Papa. Me? Nervous? Ha! Huh. Does your old man seem like the kind of guy who gets nervous about anything? Cole slowly sat down at the bar with a concerned frown. Despite his father's wide grin, there was a sullen tone to his voice. And he had a habit of turning the side of his head with a glass eye towards someone when he wanted to hide something. Mary let out a few more half-hearted chuckles before a quiet gloom fell over him. For the first time in his life, his father indeed looked somewhat nervous. Well, uh, this was a conversation we should have had forever ago, but better late than never, eh? Cole watched as Marrow reached out to pour him a drink. It was hot tea. Well, now he knew that something was wrong. A cozy silence filled the room. Marrow drank his tea quietly, but it was plain to see that countless thoughts were stewing in his mind. He let out a tired sigh. I just want to emphasize again how much I love you, boy. I couldn't have asked for a better son. I know, Papa. You say that every single day. Heh, <laughs> well, that's true. Words can never describe how proud I am to have you as my son. Mara paused to, uh, and took another sip of tea. On the other hand, maybe today is the day where I finally have the courage to say I'm not very proud of the father I've become. But wait, what? Cole gawked at him incredulously. But why? You're the best father anyone can possibly ask for. You're like the coolest guy in general. Why would you ever think... Mara calmly held up his hand. Cole grew quiet. I'm happy you think so. But that's just the thing, ain't it? I'm the fun dad, the jokester. I'm the one who will encourage you at everything you want to do and never say no. Ever. I do all that because I know deep down that whatever slack I give you, Hamish will step in as the voice of reason. Hamish is the one who's given you all the hard lessons a kid needs to learn when growing up. And he's also the one who takes the brunt of your anger and frustrations. Mary let out a sigh and took another, took another sip of his drink. His shoulders hung low in a nervous gloom. Honestly, I have no idea how to be a father. My own papa was an absolute ass of a man. Always belittling me for my passion, stepping on my accomplishments like they were nothing. Always telling me no. Mero turned towards his son with a soft smile. The day that you were brought into the world, I swore that I would never be the father he was to me. But in hindsight, I'm afraid I failed in the complete opposite direction. Bullshit! You're a good dad. No one in the world is braver and more inspiring than Mero fucking Bonebreaker. Heh. <laughs> Mero gulped down his entire tankard of tea before reaching for a cask of ale. Hate to break it to you, boy, but your father's a bit of a coward. But... He held his hand again. I swore to be honest tonight, so here are my honest thoughts. A good father inspires, but also knows when to step in and make sure their kids learn from their mistakes. I... The older hyena, the older hyena sighed and chugged his ale. I encourage and support you at every turn because I see the bitterness you send Hamish every day, and imagine the day you turn that bitterness towards me. Imagine you spitting the same contempt I have towards my own papa. That that thought scares me more than I care to admit. Mary turned towards his son with an apologetic and somber smile. I'm the fun dad who gets all the praise and love while I let my partner take the brunt of your disdain. Disdain that I thought that I thought that I ought to deserve more of. Papa! Mary chuckled and ruffled Cole's hair playfully. Did you know back in the day, Hamie was the biggest crybaby I've ever met? One mean look at the guy, and you can reduce him to tears. He's learned to hide it better nowadays, but he's still a mushy, sentimental guy deep down. Mero sighed and took a deep breath. I guess what I'm trying to say is, be nicer to Hamish, yeah? Honestly, you and me, we're both big fucking messes, and he has to deal with us every day. You know, I know you two don't always get along, but try and open up to him a little more. He doesn't show it, but all those nasty things you say really get to him. Cole fell silent as his father downs the rest of his drink. Older Hyena laughed, already slightly tipsy as he pinched his son's cheeks. You know, throughout my entire time as a father, the thing I'm most grateful for is the fact that you inherited Hamish's brains. That's the sharpest weapon in the entire Bonebreaker arsenal. Sorry you got my emotional constipation along with it. Cole gulped down his bitter thoughts with his tea and sighed. Fine, I, I get it. I'll try to be less of a shit to Hamish, if that makes you happy. It does. It truly does. Mero paused before looking deep into Cole's eyes. And another thing. I want you to promise to start being more honest with us, yes? I'm still your father, after all. If there's anything I'm doing wrong, anything you want to tell me, you can. No hard feelings. I want you to know that you can talk to me. Cole nodded again, quietly. 
Yeah, I know. But he won't. Cole stared down at his empty teacup, a deep dread clawed uncomfortably in his chest. His father was no coward. Admitting his feelings and faults to someone he loved, that was a kind of courage he sorely lacked. Oh. Chapter 2. Vulnerability and Risk. End. Oh. Character Glossaries of Chapter 2. Marrow Bonebreaker. Okay. Wow, 45, damn. The coward's the coward's rage burns Bryson blind. Marabone Breaker is a legend among the city of Axia for his horrific history of destroying property owned mostly by nobles, holding hostages of nobles' assets in exchange for better city infrastructure, and inspiring fear across the land and nobles. After wrecking an amount of destruction that even the royal family could not ignore, his merry crew of mercenaries finally settled down after city officials gave in to all their demands and also pardoned the Bonebreakers of all their crimes. Nowadays, he and his partner Hamish lead the Bonebreaker Mercenary Guild an honest living of mercenary work in the city of Axia. The origins of this famous warrior are shrouded in rumor and mystery. Some claim that he was a child raised by feral animals in the wilderness of the exterior, while others say that he was a noble himself who ran away from home in rebellion. Marrow alleges during an interview that he popped into existence through sheer willpower and spite. When his partner Hamish was asked to confirm this statement, he simply rolled his eyes and asked the interviewer to cough up their publicity state, their publicity payment. Items. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here, y'all. All right. Oh. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.